it's a reinforcement learning environment. So when it gets to the end of the maze, it gets a reward, and then it has to like multiple, multiple mazes. Yeah, it gets okay. it gets to multiple experiences. Yeah. So it's the same with tic tac toe. It gets to play the game a lot of times. Um, various types of tiger games. So these are games where you're in front of a door and you can listen and you can then hear a roar of the tiger sometimes, and it's probabilistic. So you don't. You're not, once you hear it, you're not completely sure where it came from, but it gives you a bit of information. And so you have to figure out how long to wait and how many times to listen before you make the decision of which door to go through so you don't get eaten by the tiger. So these are slightly subtle sorts of problems where you have to sort of you know, optimize multiple different things. Um, and computer games. It can learn to play Pac-Man. <laughs> yes? So I, I want to come back to a, a question that was asked earlier in a comment. This is really for deterministic systems. No. And that comes back to the stock market comment you made. Earlier. It's not for deterministic systems. Okay. These are all probability distributions. So, rock, paper, scissors, rock is not deterministic at all. You can have prediction problems where, you know, some stochastic sequence with a, with a bias in there. Okay. Yep. It's all generalized over distributions. Got it. Is it not that all these environments have kind of a Markov property? No, where are oh, these particular ones? Yeah. Um, no, some of them are Pomdi P's. They're partially observable. Okay. Yeah, so this is a Pomdi P. Um, yeah. So it's not assuming Markov. And the general model for AIC doesn't make any assumptions about these things. It's the whole history conditions on it. Yeah. So presumably, a system like this could never, if you were to ask it how it came to its decision, yeah. the, unlike the Grand Master, who's a so, why did you come up with such and such solution? You could explain it logically and rationally, but system like this could never do that. Well, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't have any language, so that's a problem. No, I mean, <laughs> but you can, it did have language. Well, you can internally look at it, the model. You can internally say, okay, here's the tree that you looked at. These are the these are the probabilities you think different things are going to happen. Say in the chess example. And so you think that the other player is really good, and so they won't miss this this obvious move, and so this is the combination of moves that leads to a good outcome. So you can inspect the model. Yep. What about games that don't have yes or no answers, have shapes of game, uh, sure. poker and things like that? Sure. So you can... Um, you that. Well, you, the reward is not necessarily binary. So that's one thing. But it's a problem. And Sounds like a good sure. way to get yourself. Well, that's no problem. Pro it, it, probabilistic distribution is no problem here. It, it, works, it optimizes the average reward. And so, at sample, it plays many games of poker, and it tries to optimize it. You teach it poker, use that to fund your research. Yeah. <laughs> right. Question for Michael. Um, have you put, put them against each other to see if you put games to infinite regress? Uh, and if, if, if it knew that it's, a, that it's a corner was the same algorithm in Prisoner's Dilemma, would it be smart enough to cooperate, knowing that it's a corner that would do the same thing? Um, so, I haven't, good one, good one. so, I didn't actually do this work, so I don't actually know if he's tried that. He may have. Uh, with the President's Dilemma, there's been previous work with AIC, and you can show that it solves it in expected sorts of ways and stuff. Okay? You've seen AIC in action. It's the world premiere. <laughs> hey, Joel was kind enough to send me a copy of this presentation. Okay, so only a small community has concentrated on general intelligence. Nobody has tried to make a thinking machine and then teach it chess. That's the key thing. The bottom line is we haven't really made that much progress quote from Marvin Minsky. Now, the thing here is that this AIX, Monte Carlo AIC learns to play all these games. You don't, you don't have, we don't have 10 different Monte Carlo AIXs that we play all the different games with. You can make up a game of this sort of complexity. Just invent one and give it to it. Come back the next morning and it's learned to play your game. Right? So it's quite general. It has a number of other very interesting properties. One of them is that it's so-called embarrassingly parallel. Because it's using Monte Carlo tree search, you can farm this out across tons of servers and break up the, the tree search, right? So if you had a supercomputer or you had access to Google's cluster or something like this, you could farm this out pretty efficiently and it would do massive searches over big spaces, right? So it's quite easy to, 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 to make this code work in parallel. That's currently going on at the moment. Oh, I, I should also say about, uh, teaching them to play chess. They're currently trying to get to play checkers. And then if they can get checkers working, they're going to try chess. So I, I don't know if Marvin Minsky would then would approve of that, but at least 
And that's what they're doing. They're actually making a system and trying to teach it chickens. Teach it chickens. Yes? So it's like a baby. It's like learning that. Mm -hmm. It starts with just a general compressor. It has no model. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yep. And you can then save the model it has. You can like, save its brain in a sense. And so, yeah, it's embarrassingly parallel. You can parallelize across massive hardware. In the future, when there's a zillion core CPUs, it's going to work quite a lot better. It might be more exciting. I have time in the storm bot now, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's an anytime algorithm. And what that means is that you can run it for a fixed amount of time. You've got three seconds. And it will then return the best answer it's managed to come up with in three seconds. And you see this in Go playing or chess playing algorithms. It has this property. And that's a really nice property if you want to scale the system up. And you can tell it that it has to run within a time constraint. And it just works the best it can within that constraint. If you give it more time, obviously you can do more searching. It can, it can work better. Uh, sorry, with the anytime algorithm, with Go, how does, yep. it, how does it, does, does it do, how does it determine, like, with the time, the number of trees as opposed to the depth? Oh, 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 oh. It just adaptively builds them as it goes, and then you just cut it off. You say, time's up, and it just returns the best answer it has. But the point is it returns a sensible answer, uh, given time constraints. As opposed to some algorithms, you've got to run the algorithm for a minute and a half before it returns an answer. If you need an answer in half a minute, you haven't got an answer. Okay? Um, and another cool thing is that it's using this Monte Carlo, uh, this, sorry, it's using this uh, context tree weighting. And you can play around with the compressor. The context tree weighting, there's limit, limited things it can do. It can't build hierarchies of sequences and all kinds of certain types of things like that. You can play around with the compressor and add other things in there. You can put logical rules in there. So you can say something about your environment. You can put a few logical rules in. You just plug it straight in and suddenly it starts working a lot better because now there's a huge space of possibilities that this doesn't have to worry about. So who is the you there? Is that the programmer or is that the intelligence yeah. itself? No, it would be the programmer in this case. And so some of the work they're doing at the moment is to enhance the compressor. You could throw all kinds of machine learning algorithms in there to find patterns and do all kinds of stuff to make the system learn better, right? It's more, more general there. Um, so... <clears throat> Some people freaked out when they saw this. Because <laughs> um, some people are very worried about super intelligent machines destroying the world and doing all sorts of things in the future. Um, you, you don't need to worry about this. Firstly, Joel is quite aware of um, these problems. Um, and he's interested in the work by the Singularity Institute and all these sorts of things. He knows about these problems and he considers them to be real problems. So he's not. He's not. And the other thing is that while it seems quite <coughs> impressive, if you really think about it, it's kind of actually, it's very general, but it's sort of like ant level of intelligence. It finds its way around a maze eating pills, right? And it, and it plays with paper scissors as well, and things like that. So at the moment, there's no, there's no danger of this. And the models are well known, they're well understood, the compressors are well understood. There's nothing too crazy going on here. So there's no need to panic. <laughs> uh, it, would, it would be, it's, it's, it, it's sort of as light years away from being able to say, understand its own source code. I mean, there's no chance of an ant writing a self-improving AI in his time soon. So, yeah, so you don't need to worry about this, at least not for, not not for a few decades anyway. Easier, and in fact, as impressive as this is, I don't think this is the way that's going to drive AI forward. Can I just, maybe, I just want to check my intuition so I've gone off down the wrong yeah. road. It wouldn't be very hard, presumably, if you've got sort of an array of these things running to bolt on a higher level that gives it directives like understand your own source code, or do it, or do anything that's you how do you, know, how a bit do you, dodgy. How do you say? How do well, you, I mean, you know, how do you code understand your own? Well, source no, okay, code? Work, code work out how work out what the um, the a, a, the ARC right. um, algorithm is, or you know, or anything you don't we don't want an AI to do. Right. It wouldn't be very hard to have a higher level that. Yeah. So this is basically just a powerful... Yeah, yeah. Well, you can do that in a much simpler way. Just have a search over all programs and keep running them and divide it up in parallel and you know, 11 to... search type argument. And you, know, you, can, you can run evolution. You can do lots of things which, in theory, can lead to these things. But in practice, it's so computably intractable, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so I think this falls into this category. We would, we would need much smarter compressors. It's just using a compressor from text compression. It's a text compressor with search strapped on the front of it. That's basically what it is. And so it's not going to take over. So it's essentially been, like, you, would you say that 
challenges is dimensionality reduction, ultimately. 